I think it's quite interesting that almost 100 years on, we're seeing the resurgence of uh, some of the luxurious trends that were typical of the Art Deco mm. period, um, marbleizing in fabrics where semi-precious stone would have been obviously yeah. you know, used extensively in the Art Deco period, and we're seeing that come through in wallpapers and fabrics, yeah. um, and an overall sort of luxury and depth of uh, texture and colour. I hope you bought your safari hats because we're headed into Africa today. You know, Africa's rising. So with this booming economy, we thought, who should we chat to? Who will shed some light on the subject? And is it as simple as donning a safari hat and going into Africa? The reality is it probably isn't. So we decided to have a conversation with Carl Rue, who's not only an esteemed designer, but also well-versed in this field, about all the obstacles that you might face in terms of export into Africa. But, before we chat to Carl, let's go look at some product. So with the African and tribal trend on the rise, I've basically earmarked a couple of collections that I thought serves the look quite well. Um, first one up has to be the brand new collection from Arte Wall Coverings called Paleo. A beautifully put together collection, comprising a very interesting plane with an almost natural sort of woven linen texture. And then into the bang bangs, which would be these beaded sort of designs with a very definite sort of tribal contemporary look. Here you've got beautiful Pacific Precious Turquoise Stone teamed up with Untrained Living Coral. Um, then the very useful plane, which Arte also has a lot of, and that's Paleo. The next one up, and probably one of my favorite houses, and Christian Lupa really is two or three seasons ahead of everyone else sometimes. And here there's this spectacular design called Exotism which I think lends itself to the look perfectly. You've got some giraffes, you've got the three graces. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Just a reminder of the two from Jab, Jab Outdoor. We've got all these tribal and African designs back and these are full outdoor with all the standard warranties and stuff related to outdoor fabrics and very interesting textures. If you look at that, it's really alive and you would never say that that's an outdoor fabric. And then under the Fiberguard label is Emoji. Emoji, quite a fun little collection with very contemporary colorways and a very textured sort of thinner. And also not very obviously um, tribal and African. So great colorways. Um, I absolutely love the green. I think that's exquisite. And with all the Fiberguard specifications, so you've got the stain-free technology. Yeah, virtually every stain. What's a tribal inspired and African inspired look without a little bit of animal print. Um, an oldie but a goodie for under the home fabrics label has to be tried for small pattern and building a texture scheme. I mean, there's a little bit of Fran Dretcher in all of us. And then Keshi Velvets from Osborne and Little, the most spectacular animal print design. So the design is called Pantanal. And that's enough about product, let's go catch up with Carl Rue. So I was born in Zimbabwe, despite having some influences as a, as a, a youngster in interior design and decor through family members. Mm -hmm. um, I actually started in, in, in accounting um, really? for my first year and uh, I was desperately unhappy and mm -hmm. uh, decided to rather pursue um, the avenue that I felt drawn towards which was interior decor and design. Mm -hmm. I worked with an architectural company for a while, we did a lot of corporates and some domestic interiors and mm -hmm. then moved to a company that did uh, fully domestic, um, mm. introduced turnkey projects uh, to their business. Probably about 15, 16 years ago, I decided that uh, I needed to expand my horizons mm. and obviously the South African design market just being more sort of uh, buoyant than yeah. what was happening in Zimbabwe at the time. <laughs> I decided yeah. to move here. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, we established Karu Interiors in Zimbabwe more than mm. 20 years ago. It has now been more than 15 years here in Cape Town. No, oh, awesome. So you established your footprint there first yes. and then you migrated over to South Africa. Absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. Euromonitor International recently mentioned in a report that South Africa and Nigeria together adds like 50% to the GDP. 
but they predicted it that by 2030 we'll be sitting at 37 percent and the rest of it will be smaller African countries. With this growth forecast that they're giving, do you think that we need to be focusing our energies on the rest of Africa for growth or what are your thoughts on this? I think it's going to become trickier and more mm. difficult for South African designers to break into African markets. As the, the, the report says, mm. obviously the, the growth in the economy in different African countries will also bring about an availability of product and obviously a growth within their own design industry. Yeah. So I actually think it's going to be more challenging to, to stay and maintain a footprint in other African countries as time goes on mm. and as they emerge. Yeah, yeah, because I think their own people will also in these countries will also rise with it. Absolutely. To because and I, I think, think to a degree we're seeing it already. You know, in countries that I've worked in, um, whereas at one time, perhaps ten years ago or fifteen years ago, um, there were very few players in the market, and mm. what they were able to offer was incredibly limited. Mm -hmm. I find that over the time that I've been traveling there and working with clients there are more and more designers emerging and uh, they are able to offer more and they have themselves tapped into the South African market really? in terms of product supply. That's amazing. So they've crossed the border back to South Africa. Sure. And I guess it's about survival, which is... Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you think South Af Africa needs South Africa for this, considering that currently we've got one of the most advanced economies? Yes, I mean, I don't think... I think to a large degree, African countries, certainly the clients that I've worked with, the impression has been that they look to South Africa for a sophistication in design which they don't necessarily find within their own market. Yeah. So I think in that respect, as South Africa is already a, a, a sort of a front runner, mm -hmm. and I think we will continue to, to advance as much as their local designers are advancing, our South mm -hmm. African designers and South African design market will advance um, similarly. And therefore I think they will always look to us to a large degree for be it, albeit inspiration, if mm. not actual design work. Or like a point of reference. A point of reference, mm. absolutely. So with this opportunity for growth, what are the biggest obstacles that designers face working into Africa? I think one of the things to bear in mind is that it's not easy exporting product out of South Africa into other African nations. Mm. Um, there are complexities regarding the actual export and import process, yeah. apart from the currency exchange. Yeah. And then also coupled with that, there are Bureau Veritas organizations mm. which deal with the standards and standard inspection of goods going out of South Africa into other African nations. Yeah. And I think an understanding of these complexities not only sets you apart from other designers and decorators who may not know about them, mm. um, and gives your client peace of mind that you have an understanding of the complexities that might pertain to their particular mm. environment, um, but I think it's important to to understand that it's just maybe not as simple as purchasing product and putting no. it on a container. No, it's not like, okay, yeah. I'm shipping this to Malawi yeah, now. Yeah. It doesn't work like no, that. Absolutely. It really is, yeah. you know, there's, and every country's got its own legislation, own requirements, and you said earlier that there's um, goalposts changing, the goalposts sure, are changing sure. all the time. I mean, with different African countries, mm. there is ever-changing uh, legislation in respect of import and export. Mm. What is the accessibility to product like in the rest of Africa? So. I think it's been limited for some time mm. um, and I think to a large degree it comes down to price points. Mm. Uh, the, the economies in these countries are obviously somewhat crippled by their rates of exchange to mm. the US dollar and therefore the accessibility to wide sort of uh, reaching product ranges mm. is somewhat limited. Mm. However, we do see that changing. Um, the, the availability of products certainly in the countries that I've worked in has increased dramatically over mm. the last 10 to 15 years. Mm. And I think people are, um, you know, as, as their own economies and their own wealth increases, mm. they are obviously looking for more mm. and would ideally like to be able to attain it locally rather mm. than having to import it themselves. Yeah. And I think it's also seeing value in product Absolutely. in the end user. It's a a like, greater perception. Of so that. a yeah. greater, yeah, a different perception because what you, if you've never had something to really compare it with, how do you, you know, what's the difference for, between this and something else, for instance? Of course, yeah. What do you consider when specifying fabric for export? So I think for me, the, the primary thing in any export product out of South Africa, whether it be fabrics or wallpaper or furniture for that matter, um, is really durability. Because mm. at the end of the day, comebacks, are expensive. Um, if you need to go back and uh, replace or change something mm. that hasn't lasted, then obviously you are going to you're going to really incur Using massive costs. <laughs> <Pitch for life. laughs> I can just imagine. Yeah. Because yeah. if yeah. you think the complexities of getting goods out of South Africa into a 
an African country are difficult, you should try getting something out of that. Yeah, you might as well just do it all over again and just ship it from, yeah. And, and we do. We have yeah. at times where something has failed, we have <laughs> just sent something new just because it's easier it than completely. bringing it back. Yeah. Yeah. And there's the timing and the disappointment factor for the client mm, as well. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, and then also specifying product like FiberGuard or something like that. Absolutely. You know, stain free. Something, something that you know that they can care for that isn't uh, isn't complex. In, yeah. You know, in in its care requirements. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. When designing for African projects, do you look for something with an African flair necessarily? No, I think in general we we try to tap into what our clients desire mm. in terms of trend. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're not designing for our own purposes, but to, to mm. satisfy the client. Having said that, though, I think whereas African clients had at one time been more inclined to move away completely from African design because that's mm. what they had been exposed to in their own local design economy. Mm. I think we are more likely to see clients responding to it and using it within their own homes mm. um, because it isn't your typical tribal design anymore. Yeah. It, it has a, a much more sophisticated flair. Yeah, much like the Safari collection from Jab that they just launched, so like Afro Chic. Okay, what is your favorite current trend and why? I think it's quite interesting that almost a hundred years on, we're seeing the resurgence of uh, some of the luxurious trends that were typical of the Art Deco mm. period. Um, Marbleizing in fabrics where semi-precious stone would have been obviously yeah. you know, used extensively in the Art Deco period, and we're seeing that come through in wallpapers and fabrics. Yeah. Um, and an overall sort of luxury and depth of uh, texture and color mm. um, in fabrics and wallpaper and design trend as a whole. Mm. Um, and you know, for me, having a passion for Art Deco, yeah. um, it's it's really quite interesting to. See that these design trends do tend to resurface, yeah. you know, over a certain period of time. That's amazing. There's been so much product coming through for that. I mean, we've had now recently we just launched a new FR1 Lazarus with the Carrara marble, and then in Designers Guild we've got all those. Um, there's so many variations on it. There's like specifically that Terrazzo design, which is also so typically Art Deco. It's yes, amazing. Yeah. yeah. In closing, what do you think is the most important tip that you can bestow upon our viewers <laughs> for working in South Africa? So, yeah, there's no there's no easy tip mm. um, that will get you into working in Africa. It is, by and large, word of mouth referral mm. um, and uh, getting a foot in the door that will will actually see a recurrence of work yeah. um, and it must be quite difficult to market yourself in such a way to break into those markets but I guess the most important thing I could offer is that once you do have that opportunity make mm. sure it works for yeah. you. Well thank you Carl, that was very insightful and we're very grateful for the little bit of knowledge that you imparted on us and then if our viewers want to find out anything more about Carl Roo and what you do, where can we find out more about you? Probably easiest on our website, mm -hmm. um, www.carlroointeriors.com mm. Awesome, so simple, let's go, no phone lines, let's just go. <laughs> Internet, that's the future. Yeah. Awesome, well that's Great. it then, thank Thanks you so much, much for your time. Yeah. Well. I think that was a great interview with Carl Rue. I only asked him a few questions. If you've got any more questions, please ask them on HF Inner Circle. Otherwise, like and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. And then, yeah, until next time, bye. Exactly, <laughs> RuPaul. <laughs> I'm going to put that in. <laughs> Don't, fuck it up. And the watching. Energy. Energy. It's like those 90s clubs. Energy!